I'm Terry Kalk and um, I'm 59 years old and I've been working for many years on uh, helping people become sustainable as possible and uh, work in with the earth and in tune with the earth and with in tune with nature. And so about six years ago, uh, my wife and I ended up uh, purchasing um, 16 acres called Fair, and we called it Fairy Hill Farm. And it was in a large subdivision, but in that subdivision, everybody had bought multiple acres, so it wasn't really tight together. It was an old farm that had been divided. And we ended up with a hilltop, and it was uh, it had been a bush hogged field up to the time we'd been there. It used to have cattle in it and very depleted soil and there's uh, about 10 acres of field on the hill and then uh, about six acres of uh, woods. And we moved out there with our little RV and asked the local power company if uh, what it would cost to uh, hook up a construction box so that we would have power to do construction with and they told us it was a hundred dollars a month minimum and that they needed to send their engineers to talk to me. At which point I said to heck with that and uh, put some solar electric panels on my RV and uh, we lived there for a year in our RV and then I began construction on our uh, eco arc, our off-grid house. Uh, all the power that went into building the house was produced by the PEV panels and we charged up our batteries and used power drills and power saws and I spent one year and built, used a lot of recycled materials and uh, some, new, some new materials as well, but we ended up uh, building a 32 foot by 20 foot uh, st structure that one half of that, the whole south side is a greenhouse, 32 feet by 10 feet. The north side of this, uh, we ended up uh, making into our living quarters. Build a kitchen, I had a bunch of standard kitchen stuff that um, you know, counters and things from a previous construction. And we built uh, a sleeping loft and a little meditation loft and we built a bathroom and a kitchen and uh, kind of a study living room. And we lived there for uh, about two and a half years before I started on to another section of the house which gave us a little bit more room because I'm a musician and I needed room to fill, fill with my musical equipment and studio. So we built another section that was 16 foot wide by 24 foot long, two story. And it's all, uh, most of that is recycled material as well. Uh, except for like we use metal roofing because it was clean and we could capture the water. Well, the Eco Arc's really pretty interesting because it's completely off grid. There's no power connection to the grid at all. Our power is stored in eight deep cycle batteries that are the same kind of battery used in a floor scrubber. And we have 1.7 kilowatts worth of solar electric panels on it, which is not really that large of a system by what a normal house would want to have to consume. Uh, but it was adequate for our needs, it has been. And then we have an, uh, an 800 watt wind turbine, which cost us less than $500. The south side of the house is a greenhouse, so it also is uh, becomes passive solar heating for the house. So if the sun's shining, even in the dead of winter, it can be sub-zero. If the sun's shining, we have to open windows in the house because it gets too warm very rapidly. It's very nice, so it cuts our heating bill immensely. During the summer, it, uh, we have to uh, put shade cloth on the greenhouse and keep the windows open because it, it gets too hot, okay? Our power comes in from the solar panels and the wind turbine. The wind turbine doesn't work too much during the summer because there's not a lot of wind around here during the summer. But during the winter, when we're not, there's not as much sun, there's a lot of wind. And so uh, and our uh, turbine is uh, 36 feet in the air and we're on a hilltop too. So, the, so it's a good wind site. You can't use a wind turbine in the woods or something. You, know, you have to really find a good site for it. And so we had a good site for that. We use a composting toilet system. We introduce no water to uh, the, the feces, or uh, we also add our garbage. We do add our garbage to it, and we add sawdust, sometimes chopped up 
cardboard pieces of paper, anything that can compost well. There's a urine diverter there. When a woman sits down, uh, it's aligned so that it captures her urine, and if a man's standing up, he can just uh, aim for it. And there's a toilet seat on top and stuff that closes and closes. And that drops down and it goes to a uh, truck bed toolbox that opens on the two sides. And um, we sealed one of those sides and so through the floor that pipe drops and mates with that toolbox. Toolbox is slightly sloped and the other end you can o open the lid and easy access. So all your so waste solids drop down through there and if you put a lot of uh, carbon material with human feces, it will compost very rapidly and with very little smell. We do have on our toilet seat, there is a uh, seal around it, so it's, it's, it gets fairly airtight because there is a little smell. It's kind of, it's, it's not really in the indoor outhouse because the outhouse is a anaerobic condition, uh, which means it's oxygen starved. And an oxygen starved environment makes uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, that rotten egg odor, the characteristic terrible smells of outhouses. This isn't like that. Composting is an aerobic process, meaning there's a lot of air in it. So, uh, and that means it, it uses oxygen. It's a whole different set of bacteria that break down. Actually, the bacteria start on it. It never turns it into a sewage-like material at all. It quickly, actually quickly, uh, starts getting uh, molds. We found different uh, funguses growing on it. Uh, mushrooms sometimes will grow on it. And so decompose it, kind of like what happens in a forest floor as opposed to a septic tank. So uh, that stays in there all about, uh, about every two weeks I rake it down a little bit so where it falls down from the toilet to the bin so it doesn't heap up and I move it forward a little bit. It stays in there for about six months uh, and then I take a shovel and a pail and just get this material. It kind of looks a lot like thick heavy dirt at this point. Um, and then I go take it outside and add it to another composter, which has all our yard waste, standard compost pile, and uh, let it go for another year, and that compost pile then goes out of the garden. We had a planting party out here about six years ago. Put in a lot of different plants. This had been a just a bush hogged field. Instead of continuing to bush hog it or mow it to look like a golf course, we just started letting it grow. Okay, the, most of this land we just allowed to grow, but we did it originally put in a bunch of other plants, fruit trees, berry bushes, etc., throughout the landscape to see what would become indigenous or become part of it. And about a third of that has weathered and stayed. We started with very poor soil. It was just clay with about two inches of topsoil, very poor topsoil. So we've been adding much, much to that. And we started out with adding the, it's clay soil, and if you add gypsum to clay soil, it fluffs up that clay. So as when we did our construction, we had a lot of small pieces of drywall left. Well, drywall is gypsum board, so we broke that up and added it to the garden, and that's been totally integrated into the soil now, and it, it has fluffed it up a lot. And then we also, if every place we wanted a new plant bed outdoors, we save all our paper and all our cardboard and everything, layer it really thick on the, gra on the surface, and it's mostly grasses around there. So we layered that there and uh, then dug a trench around the uh, sides of the bed and heaped that dirt on top, mixed in the drywall, and, uh, all, and then we mix in our compost from our composting toilet. Once it's been dead. And we've actually got some great soil going on. I give it five more years before I'm gonna show it to anybody and go, look at this, because it will be beautiful by that point. But anything worth doing takes a while. And, you know, and soil is the root of our entire culture. If we destroy the soil, there's no food, there's nothing anymore. So um, our folks have been building that soil good enough to really produce food, and it's been working great.